Hello everybody, welcome back to Project C1. For those that don't know, my name's Dave and C1 is my project car. Um, today we're doing something on the C1 to help it run a little bit smoother. It's uh, it's idling kind of lumpy, it's not accelerating as quick as it should be, it's drinking more fuel than it should be, and I think another reason why. Um, so to that end, today what I'm going to do is remove the throttle body, the PCV valve, that's positive crankcase ventilation, and also the um, MAP sensor, that's maximum absolute pressure sensor. Uh, the reason behind that is because if they're clogged, then airflow's not gonna be as good as it is, ventilation's not gonna be as good as it should be, that sort of thing. Uh, and removing those and cleaning them should help resolve the issue. Now, a little bit of a disclaimer for this video. The bit that you are watching right now was recorded a little bit after the meat of the video. Uh, in the meat of the video, I referred to the MAP sensor as the MAF sensor, which is a mass airflow sensor. C1s, 107s and IGOs don't have a MAF sensor, they have a MAP sensor right at the back of the um, the, the engine there, uh, as you'll see in the video. So, uh, accept my apologies for that now, uh, I have made corrections in the video where necessary, but uh, that said, let's get on with it. Okay, so the equipment that you're going to need for this then is a socket set, um, with the usual sort of add-ons, spanners, screwdrivers, that sort of thing. Uh, I'm going to need some tissue, I'm going to need some electrical contact cleaner or math sensor cleaner. It's basically the same stuff. Uh, this company, Manol, I've been wanting to try them for a little while, so yeah, let's give that a shot. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is remove the airbox. To do that, there's a handful of clips around, four of them. Of course, you can get them off with one hand because I can't. <laughs> So those four clips, we move around to this side. There is one little squeeze here, you can pull that up. And if you can see that there, one little squeeze there, pull that up. And then that pulls straight off. Okay, so that leaves us with the crankcase ventilation and the throttle body. And that's what we're gonna be taking off. In order to get access to this bolt just down here, which by the looks of things, it's actually missing. That could explain why it's running rough. Um, I'm going to move this wiring harness. And to do that, it's this little plastic clip. Stick a flat blade screwdriver behind it and pull that out of the way. And that leaves us access to that bolt just there. Okay, so just to demonstrate where the remaining two bolts are, we go up and over the top of the throttle body. If we look down the side, there's one that side and one that side. So we'll remove those and then that will be the throttle body free, ready to come out. So, what we've done is we've removed those three bolts and those brass receptacles there. We've removed the actual throttle body itself. There were two electrical connectors, those two just there, and they go one there and one there. Now, as you can see, those two are completely different shapes. So when you're putting it back, you cannot get it wrong. All we need to do now is get a 12mm uh, spanner, undo this lock nut, which will release the cable which then just pulls out of there like that. So let's get that cable off and then we'll get the, uh, the throttle body out and clean it. All right then, so as we can see, uh, in general, this is showing every one of its 103,000 miles. Uh, having a look inside there, that's a bit oily, a bit nasty. Uh, spring sim better days, but it's still serviceable, we'll just give that a clean. Uh, if we have a look at the business end of it, oh, look at that. 
that's nasty that so uh, yeah we'll give this a clean out and uh, we'll see what we can do about getting the mass sensor out and doing the same to that Okay, so that's clean now. Um, I've not bothered cleaning all the cosmetic stuff like that. You know, I just gave it a quick once over. My most important mission today was to clean this lock, this nasty intake, which is looking far cleaner than it was. I mean, look at the colour of that. Uh -oh. I'm very impressed with that. That is looking much cleaner than it was. Can't do that with one hand. Um, believe me, it looks clean in there. So let's put that to one side for now. Let's go and get the MAF sensor out and we'll give that a clean too. Okay, so in order to clean the MAF sensor, what we do now is we undo this nut here that I've already uh, cracked off a little bit. Undo this uh, electrical connector here and that would then just pull out. So that's the mass sensor out. That was a little bit more of a faff than I thought it would, to be honest with you, but never mind. Uh, okay, let's have a look at it. That is nicely covered in oil. That is probably the cause of my rough running issue. Let's have a look at the connectors. Uh, they seem okay. So it's not that. I think it's that. So we'll give that a good clean. We'll clean around the surface in the area. We'll check for any loose articles or anything like that. And then we'll pop them all back in. So that's clean. That is far better than it was. Giving that a quick blast out, a quick wipe. That looks way better than it was. Uh, I've even took the liberty of cleaning the contacts. They didn't really need it, but I thought, hey, while I'm here, just to prevent any future issues. Yeah, okay. Let's get that put with the uh, actual manifold itself and we'll put them back in. Right, so um, what we've done is we've cleaned around the general area, we've cleaned inside, we've cleaned around uh, and we've checked to see if there's any damage or any loose articles or anything like that in the way. Um, while we were there, I've just had this gasket out, uh, pull that out again, just had this gasket out and just inspected it for any damage or anything like that. Uh, usually you would replace this gasket but I'm not going to for two reasons. Number one, that one looks just fine. Uh, it seems to be doing the job just well. There's no damage to it or anything like that. The rubber's still quite supple, all that sort of good stuff. And number two, I don't have one. So I'm just going to leave that one in place. So what we're going to do now then, I'm going to pop the uh, mass sensor back in there, pop the throttle body back on there, plug all the electric connectors in, put that back onto its little harness thing just there. And then we'll put the throttle cable back on and we'll start it up, see what happens. And of course, once again, a wild Tilly appears. She has this thing about being on my car. I don't know why. She just does. But she's one of the sweetest cats I've ever met. So if you see her in the background again later on in the video, <laughs> it's just failed getting up the window, then don't worry about her. She's just showing you a chocolate starfish there. Thanks for that cat.
today. Uh, I've just been speaking to a friend of mine called Chris, uh, link to his channel down in the description. Um, might do the PCV while we're at it, because of course, here's the PCV hole that goes back into the air circulation system, comes this way towards the air filter and back through and all that sort of good emission stuff. But just in here, there's a little valve that we're going to take out and clean. So we're going to squeeze these, push this whole thing back and it should just pop out. see how nasty that really is in there oh that's disgusting so uh, yeah let's go get that cleaned up instead okay so here's the PCV then um, that is actually quite disgusting um, not gonna lie I've never seen one that bad but listen to that it does still move inside it is still free so it is still doing its job so what we're going to do is we're gonna clean this up we're going to see if we can get it any any more free inside. I mean, I doubt it. It's pretty, it's pretty good that I can still feel the the machinery inside moving around. Well, some machinery, you know what I mean. Um, yeah, a bit nasty. So uh, we're going to get the cleaner out. I'm going to have a go at that. Mm. I have a feeling that's going to take a little bit more than electrical contact cleaner. So to that end, deploy the brake and clutch cleaner. It's a little bit more, let's say, let's say harsh. Uh, it's a stronger chemical solution. This one doesn't quite flash off as quick. So let's get that uh, all cleaned up the best we can. Okay, so there we have it. One clean PCV. Uh, yeah, seems all right. I mean, as you can see in there, there's like a little, oh, probably can't actually, but there's a little spring in there uh, and there's a little like film in there, okay. That sounds far better than it did. So I'll just shake the remainder of the brake cleaner out and the contact cleaner and such like that. Watch it flash off on the bin there. And then uh, we'll throw that back in the car. Right, so I'm just gonna give this quick area a quick clean up and then uh, we'll pop it back in, pop the pipe back on. Oh. That came from inside the valve housing. There we go, that's all put back together now. Okay, so we've rebuilt everything, we've cleaned it all up, let's start up and see how she runs. Well, she's running far quieter now, I'm happy with that. A lot smoother, a lot quieter, a lot happier by the looks of it. So, I think I'll take that one for a win. So, that was a, a very simple, quick and easy job to do. I hope you enjoyed that. I certainly did. It was uh, it was quite a basic thing to do and it made such a difference. Uh, I've taken it for a drive since recording this video and my average fuel economy has gone up from around 50-ish miles per gallon to around 62, 63. So it's made a drastic impact on, on the actual running of the car. It's running a lot smoother. It's running a lot happier. It accelerates the way that it should do. Everything is good now. Um, I enjoyed it. 
So, uh, uh, I've actually done this since recording the video on a friend's car and she's noticed the difference as well. Uh, if you enjoyed it, you know what to do. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, all that sort of good stuff. Um, likes and comments and subscribes and that sort of thing always help the video and the channel out and the YouTube algorithm. It helps uh, promote the channel. And if you did like it, then follow me on Instagram just here. Uh, that'll give you some sneak peeks of what I'm up to in between making videos. And subscribe to the rest of the channel, in particular the rest of the series, up here. And if you did like it, remember to ring that notification bell to get notified whenever I drop a new video. And I'll see you in the next video.